Okay, well, I've got to finish this video before my visitation hour ends, so let's just jump into it. But first, this requires some backstory. So about two years ago, someone who you don't really seem to believe exists because she's never in videos, Alice, worked at a pet store who got to meet a lot of interesting people. One of which was a guy that came in and was like, I mean, the largest live rat you have in this entire building. And she was like, okay, I'll go see if we have any massive live rats. What are you feeding? And he was like, I've got this big boa constrictor. She's, a, it, he, I don't know. It's such a massive pain and it's a massive snake. It hates everything. It hates everyone. It's constantly biting me. And he showed his hands to her and he was just covered in these massive scars, which were clearly from a very big snake. And he was so frustrated and he was like, I have to feed it again. It only eats live. <sighs> and ultimately, I think I'm just going to release it because I am tired of this. No one's gonna want it and that is it. So just give me your rat so I can go and deal with this stupid animal. And she was like, I can take it. And he was like, oh, here's my address. And he gave her his address, which she went to, and it was in the middle of the mountains and a house that was basically suspended in the air, also known as a tree house, but not like a kid's tree house, like a literal tree house. I didn't see it. I, It's not even on Google Maps because it's so remotely into the woods and she didn't die. She wasn't killed or anything in the middle of the woods, but <laughs> what am I saying? And personally, I've been on some kind of creepy reptile pickup. Sometimes they're super far into the woods. Sometimes they can only meet at night and I really shouldn't have been going to those places, but I made it out alive and she did as well. And so she went up into this literal tree house and found a 20 gallon with Aspen and this Dumeril's boa just hanging out in it. It was, a, a big snake and at this point she had only ever handled snakes as large as ball pythons and so at the moment he opened the enclosure to show her this stupid snake that he was about to release she tried to bite him she was striking and lashing out and very angry i don't actually know if he ever got the live rat or not he didn't feed her she just had to go in and try and pick up this animal so she couldn't exactly just throw the 20 gallon in her car and he probably wanted to keep the enclosure anyway for his next boa constrictor. So she had to reach into this enclosure and get it out so she could bring it home. And the animal didn't really react. It was it was this animal, I don't know what I'm talking about, like it's not here. So she had to reach in this enclosure to get it into a container and into the vehicle. If I was there, I would have probably just made him give me the 20 gallon because I don't feel like dealing with a very grumpy snake in someone else's house that is also in a tree, also known as a tree house, but she did. She reached into the snake and she didn't do anything. She didn't care. She flicked her tongue and the guy was like, oh, why is it not biting you? And she was like, I don't know, but she's not. And so she got the snake out and took her home. Now, where she was living at the time, she couldn't actually keep this animal and she knew me, so she was like, here you go, an Emerald Scales animal for you to sell on the site. And I was like, cool, I am finally getting something aside from a ball python. And this is hurting my back. I was excited because I liked Dumeril's boas. And at that <laughs> point, I don't think I had ever gotten one. I had gotten some larger snakes, like boa constrictors. <laughs> I didn't intend for this to happen. But yeah, basically just boa constrictors. So a Dumeril's boa was finally another large snake that um, I could experience and I didn't want to keep, really keep her personally, but she drove her over to me and she hung out at my rental home at the time where I had the Emerald Scales animals and she just hung out, but I actually quite liked her and I figured she'd probably stick around for a bit. Could do some videos on her, which I eventually did. And we named her, well, Alice named her um, Ivy. So this is Ivy, the Dumeril Spa. And for a temporary period of time, I owned a Dumeril's boa, who is quite sweet, quite large, and fun to just hang out with when she's not trying to strangle you. But Alice started becoming attached to the boa as well, and she would have kept her had she had the space. But eventually, she did have the space and decided that she was gonna keep Ivy, and I was like, but I already have Ivy. I was gonna sell her, and after making videos. And I knew I was gonna get other snakes, so it wasn't really a massive deal. And we decided we would simply share custody of the boa constrictor, cause why not? But then I ended up getting swarmed with animals around this time because this was about two years ago. And then I started making unboxing videos. And after that, that's when it went from a few inquiries to take animals 
to many few inquiries where it was like 50 to 60 people that want to send me a bunch of ball pythons each. And I was like, oh, but the Dumeril's bow is finally something that isn't a ball python. <laughs> it's okay, at least she's around. But I got so caught up with all the other animals that I simply lost custody of this Dumeril's boa. And so I lost her. But not really, because we ended up living together, and now Ivy lives one room over. She's literally next to my office. So, in the end, although I legally don't own the snake, and I can't sell her for profit, it's okay, because Ivy is still here. But I think it's a very interesting story, regardless. She's had a very interesting past, because like many animals, she's purchased by someone by a pet store. I might be wrong, but I think she was purchased from the pet store the guy went to to get the rat, and he had her for a long time, because it takes quite a while for a snake to grow this large, and she was actually a bit bigger than she is now, because he would just throw in live rats. Very similar to a lot of other snakes that we've gotten, like Rosie, the boa constrictor, who I've done tons of videos on, and Ivy was basically the same, just from a whole separate place, separate owner, but an eerily similar story, which makes me believe that it's not rare with large snakes, especially not rare with smaller snakes that we do get in, that people get, and simply neglect. And Ivy is proof that you can actually really hurt an animal, and yet they come out surprisingly okay, even if they're constantly kind of suffering in pain, which is bittersweet because A, at least they have a chance at a new owner who could be happier in the future, or whatever emotion you want to say, less in pain, more satisfied, more comfortable, thriving in some sort of sense. But at the same time, they do have to endure a lot of time because she's, I mean, Ivy's not a young snake. I think she's at least over a decade old. And like I said, she's very overweight. So she had to lose a lot of weight, was probably uncomfortable. She had really bad stuck shed because she was living on Aspen, just in a 20 gallon enclosure. Uh, Dumeril's bows don't need as much humidity as some snakes, but she obviously did not really have any sort of a setup. Her scales were very like crinkled, like they were folded in half basically, like they had creases in them. And I never knew what this was. I had gotten a couple snakes like years ago and I was like, why are the scales like this? But after getting a handful, I realized that it's actually when they're in such small enclosures or such small snake hides, their scales literally start folding because they're in such a tight coil that, what are, I mean, what are scales made of? Keratin, I knew that. I didn't know that. And so when they're in that position for so long, it literally leaves permanent creases in their body until it's fixed. So eventually she was put in a larger enclosure, uh, a four foot enclosure, and over time, the more she shed, the better the scales got because the scales slowly heal over time. She sheds off the old skin and they get a little bit better. So now, although she's still not the healthiest animal ever, one of the funnier parts is she has a lot of loose skin because even though they can lose weight, which is often has a healthy thing for heavier animals, they don't exactly lose their skin very quickly. So although I think she has, her body's kind of adjusted very slowly and lost a little bit of that skin so that it tightens up, she still has some rolls from the loose skin. So it looks kind of silly, but it doesn't really bother her. Ivy has never been fed live here. She instantly started taking Frozen, which is kind of nice. I don't really like feeding live unless I have to, especially the really large rats, because A, they're expensive, and B, it sucks for all parties involved. It's more risky for the animal, and the rat doesn't have the best time of its life. But now Ivy's cool. She, she hangs out, she does whatever. She's very comfortable. She can lie in bed with you and uh, let me use a different example. She can lie near you and just hang out and uh, you really don't even have to watch her super closely because she's not really a snake that's gonna just fling away, but like anything she's gonna explore and eventually probably get stuck in something. So it's kind of like a toddler, but a slightly more well-behaved toddler that you don't have to keep your eyes straight on. It can just kind of be in your peripheral vision to make sure it doesn't stick a fork in an outlet. So. That's Ivy, she's cool. Like many other animals, we don't know how long she'll be around, but she's recovered very well from her not super epic husbandry and any bites she had from rats have completely healed up because it's been over two years now. So that's pretty cool. She's never had a shortage of strength and she's definitely adapted well. So it's pretty crazy and she's just one of those other stories, but I wanted to dedicate something to her because she is in a lot of the videos. I use a lot of clips of her when talking about other animals. She is one of the biggest snakes that we have here and an interesting example of the average husbandry of the average pet keeper who goes down to the pet store, buys a cute little snake, and then regrets it later down the road. If she had gotten released, I don't really know. Well, I mean, this was 
I mean, she was in a very cold climate because North Carolina does get pretty cold and the area she's in, it gets way below freezing, but this was during the summer. So she actually probably would have been fine. He was living in the middle of the woods. If he had released her, I'm sure she would have found food. She could have eaten squirrels, rabbits if she could get one, probably not, cause she's not that fast. Uh, rats, mice, pretty much anything in the area. So I think she actually would have lived like the entire summer, assuming nobody found her and freaked out and caught her, shot her, killed her, whatever, because this big old copperhead is in their front yard. But when the winter time came around, she would not be able to survive that because they can't really do that because they're cold blooded. So that was Ivy who was kind of mine for a while, who eventually, yeah, I would have probably sold her on Emerald Scales and when you could have been hanging out with her, but no, she is hanging out here and I am now roommates with her instead of the custodian. That sounds weird too. And Ivy also showed me that there are still a few snakes that I think are quite cool. And I did another video on her uh, and just demerals in general of why I think they're the most underrated uh, pet snake species. So you can check that out, which also features a lot of clips of her. Uh, I've sold a couple on emerald scales that were a bit smaller, but I do think they're a lot more fun when they're this size, because although she kind of strangles me sometimes, it's not too bad. She can be easy and interesting to just chill with like a little puppy, not really. She's a lot easier than a puppy. I'd recommend her. But that's it for this video. I'm Alex, and thanks for watching. I can't get to the camera. Here we go, ending the video.